talking about views, just have a look at this. Isn't that just the most unbelievable thing, to be honest with you? It, it, it is a beautiful golden light afternoon on this green grass with gray and white and blue in the sky and a slight dusty brownness to the contact zone between the earth and the sky coming from all the animals just kicking up a dust storm. And then there's just all these animals in these plains, which is making it even better. It's just a very pretty afternoon from a scenery point of view. And I just thought that we'd share it with you there. What a lovely bat. Defasa waterbuck, zebra, and any multitude of animal behind them. And eland. It was lovely. Sometimes these scenes stick with you. That is, that is the view that is going to be stuck with me. And what is the Mara? That is it. Now, Stevie, you commented that it's a beautiful view with so many animals. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that you share that with me. It's sometimes quite difficult to actually show you what I'm looking at through the the camera, no, no matter how sophisticated these cameras get and the lenses that we've got, I mean, we, it, it is honestly amazing the technology that we have on these vehicles. It's always sometimes difficult to, uh, to show you what my eyes are seeing. And I, I'm glad that it's coming through there. There's some warthog that have just come out onto the grass now. They're going for a late afternoon picnic. There we go, just get my bald, shiny head out of the way. There's a funny folklore story that Warthog run with their tails up because their skin was put on too tight. And when they run, the grass slaps their eyes and they have to close their eyes and that pulls their tails up. When they stop, they open their eyes and their tails go down. <laughs> You'll see when they run, they close their eyes because the grass slaps their eyeballs and the tails go up. And as soon as they stop and they open their eyes again, the tails will go down. <laughs> uh. Of course, that's uh, not true for everyone out there. That is a following mechanism for their babies. Robin, you wanted to know, do people actually count and monitor the herds? They absolutely do. I mean, between Game Drives today, we had a research couple who are doing research on why drownings occur on the, at, on the Mara River at the crossing points. Um, they're cheetah researchers, they're rhino researchers, there's migration researchers, river researchers, elephant researchers, buffalo researchers. Uh, this place is crawling with researchers. And each of them have a different topic and each of them do a different thing, but it all boils down to the same thing. It's the scientific uh, evaluation of basically whatever is going on out here. That's a black-headed heron, a common grassland heron out here. And so, yes, I, I mean, is there a census? Yes. Uh, is it across the entire Serengeti Mara ecosystem in batches? Yes. Is it scientifically av available to, to people? Yes. I, I don't know through what channels, but they absolutely are. I mean, just today I found out that there's water level monitors on the rivers where live you can go and see the temperature and the height of the river at that particular point at any time in the day. It's a, it's a live feed. You can access it. It's just... The amount of information out there is just astounding. It's just meeting all these people. I think scientists are, by nature, quite introvert people. And quite often you don't know where to find all this information. All right, um, lion, uh, Taylor's lions have now gotten up and are busy eating. And I think, rather than having a look at this vista with me, go and have a look at that.